Hey guys, good morning. My name's Kyle Hamrick. Just wanted to share a little bit about my liver flushing process, uh, the protocol I use, uh, the benefits I've had, the ups and downs. Um, and uh, maybe a, I know a lot of you guys have been talking about doing one and maybe this will give you a little insight into it as a process overall. So about 2008 is when I first learned about the process. I was actually going to a, a chiropractor not too far from where I live and uh, hadn't been getting any relief in other things that I'd been doing. You know, I was taking all the supplements, doing the parasite cleanses and, you know, all the stuff we normally run into at the beginning. Uh, of getting ill. Um, it got to where I couldn't eat hardly anything, couldn't walk, had to stop working, you know, it was a terrible, horrible situation. Um, tons of pressure in my chest. That was my main, that was probably the worst symptom I had was just all of this pressure up, just building up inside of my chest. Uh, felt like I was having a heart attack all the time, heart pounding. Um, and it was just the symptoms of other things going on that was kind of causing this down the line so my chiropractor recommended you know doing this particular one uh, I don't do this one anymore but at the time you would drink about a gallon of apple juice over the course of about three days uh, so maybe like a quart a day quart and a quarter a day something like that and make sure it was like raw unfiltered um, unpasteurized and the malic acid inside of that and you know the idea is that it would soften the stones that are blocking the liver ducts, blocking the, the gallbladder, common bile duct, things like that. That way, whenever you take the oil in a few days, the oil will cause the liver and gallbladder to, to open up and purge into the small intestine. So I did that one. Uh, that was my very first one. Uh, three days, nothing but raw apple juice, uh, nothing else, no eating, just straight fasting. And then the third day you would drink the oil. Typically you'd do four ounces of oil, six ounces of fresh pressed grapefruit juice. Uh, that's the one I was following at the time. Um, so I did that. And then after my first flush, you know, you can use a strainer. You know, some people don't want to look at it. Some people don't want to deal with it. But when you're as ill as I was, like, you want to see what was going on. If, if you've had a sudden change in health, you're like, okay, what came out of me? What was contributing to these symptoms? So I would catch them in a stranger and whatnot. First time, I passed probably about 800 to 1,000 of these flat-shaped diamond pieces. And it was weird because a lot of people didn't have this in the, in the results that I had seen. And uh, they were almost perfectly, it was almost like an outer coating of something that had came, come off in these diamond-shaped looking pieces, but they were flat. Um, didn't know what it was, didn't pass any stones at all during that time. It was just strictly like a layer of cholesterol that was broken up through this process. Um, all I know is about a day or two afterwards, I noticed 90 plus percent of my symptoms were gone, like instantly. Nothing a supplement could fix, nothing a cleanse or a detox could fix. Um, they were gone. Me and my wife took a trip, I think like the very next week. We went to Florida, stayed for like three weeks. This was back in 2009, I think, something like that. Uh, went down there, was taking walks. We, we had a fifth wheel camper at the time. We were staying at a campground. We were walking around the campground, just having our, having the time of our life. I was eating food again. I thought, you know, hey, all these years of sickness has been erased and just doing the cleanse. And I thought it was over. I thought, you know, hey, I'm good to go now. You know, I thought that was it. And then two or three years later, my symptoms slowly started to creep back and I'm like, and I didn't pair it to the liver flush, you know, being the key because, you know, when time passes like that, sometimes you can forget, uh, you know, what actually contributed to the symptoms going away. So I didn't do a flush immediately. I didn't think I was ever going to do one again. You know, it's not the most pleasant process, at least not at first, for sure. So these symptoms start coming back. I start not being able to eat anything. The supplements don't make a difference. Pressure way up in my chest. Panic, fear, anxiety every single day. Um, just horrible, horrible symptoms. Um, and then finally, uh, my chiropractor's like, hey, won't you try a liver flush again? And I'm like, mm, I don't really know that that's gonna fix what I got going on. And sure enough, I did another one. This was like two or three years later. 
and I actually started passing stones this time. Um, the first few, it's you could, it can be a little slow moving because picture this dam of stones that are just in your liver, these cholesterol stones with a very hard outer shell, unless you soften them. Not like a, you know, not like a super strong stone, but it's the outer coating uh, can be like the shell of a tic tac in a way, if you know what that is, or or a frozen pea or something like that. Um, but I begin to pass a little by little. And then around the fourth or the fifth flush that I did, that's kind of like when the dam broke loose, where I started passing hundreds and hundreds of stones like with a flush. And that's when I started getting symptom relief again. Um, but I, I started learning about the process and learning about how, how deep this problem really is. You know, the biliary tree inside of the liver goes back a long way. Um, it's not just, you know, one flush and you're done and move on with your life. If you really want to clear the liver and the gallbladder, you know, with the stones. But as I got to doing the second and the third, I, I kind of, I was still doing the apple juice, um, which I wouldn't recommend personally. It's just way too much sugar. The bloat that you get from doing it is just brutal. Um, so over the years, I've migrated and kind of found my comfortable flush that I do. And that is, now I use malic acid. It's called L-malic acid. There's two different versions. One's derived from fruit, and one's just more synthetic. I wouldn't get the synthetic one. I would get the L-malic acid. You can find it on Amazon or whatnot. Um, but I started using that instead of uh, apple juice. And basically, and I'm doing my, my flesh today, basically take a quart of water, teaspoon of malic acid. Tastes like you're drinking sweetheart water without the sweetness. Just very tart. Uh, for six days, I do that. I just sip on that quart throughout the whole day, and for those, and for five of those six days, I eat regular nutritional balance and diet. Um, you know, I don't cut out anything. If you wanted to cut out more fat or protein, I don't think it would help towards the end. You know, towards the fourth, fifth, or sixth day. Um, but I haven't found it to be necessary. Now, on the sixth day, I either don't eat at all, or I take some pressure cooked vegetables and eat them around say 11 or 12 in the morning around lunchtime and then don't eat anything else don't eat any protein any fat during that day anything like that uh, just you want to cause that bile to really build up and if you're not eating fat and protein it'll help accumulate that bile our, our liver is supposed to be producing about a, a quart of bile a day anyway so the whole thing is to hopefully just fast from fat from fat and protein from the night before. So it's almost a 24 hour period until you drink the oil the next night. So outside of that, you know, the malic acid being the main thing that softened them, I take some Chanca Piedra, uh, C-H-A-N-C-A, Piedra, P-E-I-D-R-A. And I take some gold coin grass tincture too. Uh, these are organic, they're not alcohol based, they're glycerin based. Um, I do these when I really want to soften up a stone or when I want to trigger a lot of bile flow. It really helps the results of the flush or in between the flushes if you're having some, some blocked stones there. So that's it, basically six days drinking malic acid. Uh, some people fast completely from food. Some people take phosphoric acid drops. I haven't tried that yet. I know Dr. Wilson recommends it. I haven't tried it personally. And I just, I've kind of found something that works for me. So I just hadn't went out and tried to fix what wasn't broken. Um, and some people don't use anything at all. I think that's a little bit more of a risk when, when they don't soften their stones and they eat regular. And I think it puts a lot more risk of getting a stuck stone. But so six days of malic acid, sixth day, I eat a little bit of vegetables if I want. If not, if I'm not feeling too great, I just don't eat anything. And then at 6 p.m., a tablespoon of Epsom, Epsom salt inside of about six ounces of water. Now a little trick I've found to do that, um, to absorb some of the chemicals and toxins that, that start being thrown off by the liver, because uh, as soon as you start taking the Epsom salt, your, your tubes, your, your bile ducts begin to, to dilate. You know, that's the whole purpose of the, the Epsom salt. Uh, I know it's disgusting, trust me, I hate it. I about gag every time still, uh, horrible. <laughs> but it, it dilates the bile ducts and some of that bile will start trickling past and a lot of it's toxic, you know, especially if you hadn't ate anything in about a, you know, 24 hours or so. 6 p.m., six ounces of water, one tablespoon of Epsom salt. It's good to go ahead and just prepare it earlier in the day. 
because you're going to have four total doses. So you pour yourself 24 ounces of water, four tablespoons of Epsom salt. Go ahead and mix it up. That way it's already dissolved by the time you need it. And you're going to do two doses that night, one at six, one at eight in the evening on the sixth day. And then at 10 p.m., you can drink your, your olive oil. I always use unfiltered Bragg's. Uh, it just seems to be a little bit more better quality than the others. Um, I know Dr. Wilson's recommending just drinking the oil straight. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but I have been doing the, the grapefruit, six ounces of grapefruit and four ounces of olive oil. Here lately, I've lowered the grapefruit down to about three ounces or so, uh, just to do less of the fruit. But the acidic, the acidic, the acidity of the grapefruit juice is supposed to help balance the oil and help help with it, you know, go through your body a little bit better. But I'm leaning more and more towards just doing little of the grapefruit juice, maybe two to three ounces, and maybe go down to to none in the future. But it's just really tough to get that down. It's really hard for me. Um, I also add a little teaspoon of charcoal to that as well. So I do a teaspoon of charcoal with each Epsom salt drink and I do a teaspoon of charcoal with the olive oil and grapefruit drink. So 10 p.m., down it immediately. Um, be right near where you want to lay down. I personally do two back-to-back -back coffee enemas right after I drink the oil. There's a lot of different opinions on that. I do a coffee enema the, sixth, the morning of the sixth day, too. Uh, I do four a day anyway, but on the day of the flush, day number six. I do one in the morning, I don't do any of my afternoon ones, and I don't do any evening ones until I drink the oil. Then I do two back to back. Um, go to bed, lay down. Immediately, if you can, lay on your right side, pull your knees to your chest for about maybe five to six minutes. Row to the left side, pull your knees to the chest for about five to six minutes. Try to do the pulling down exercise, if you're familiar with it. It'll just help basically imagining those stones trickle out of your liver. That's going to help a a ton of the actual process. It, you know, it might sound a little more esoteric. Uh, how can my thinking, you know, allow more stones to come out? But it can. Sometimes you can feel them rumbling out. Um, go to bed if you can. Um, I say one in every six or seven flushes. I, I get pretty nauseous depending on how how bad the toxicity is, how many stones are coming out. Because you got to understand, a lot of these stones are just nothing but chemicals and toxins, and the stones are formed to you know, to try to protect our body um, from absorbing them. So the more drugs you've done in the past, the poor, you know, the poor diet you've had, um, vaccinations, you know, poor lifestyle choices, whatever you want to, the, the more extreme that is, the more stones you're likely to have. And the more you, flushes you'll probably likely need to do. But in the morning, you can choose where you want to do your last two doses of Epsom salt. You can do it at six and eight. If you're a late riser, you can do it at 8 and 10. You know, it doesn't really matter. But those are just to further clean you out, to get every get the stones out. You don't want the stones sitting in there. Some people go and do um, water enemas, or they can go get a colonic done locally. I've never done the colonics after the, the flush, just because I feel like I can get the job done here at my home. But yeah, after that, you can start collecting it. Some people start passing stones um, the evening of before they even drink the oil. That's how you can kind of um, dismiss the the lie about, hey, these are just substones. You know, you, can, you hear that a lot, where this is just simply oil and the Epsom salt mixture and it's forming the stones. Uh, I know people that have passed stones before they even drink the oil. Um, one way you can tell is you can actually cut the, the stone open and you can see some of that waxy bile that's built up. Um, but yes, yeah, several people have passed it without drinking the oil, so don't let that discourage you from thinking that the flesh is real. So yeah, after you do the last two Epsom salts on the seventh day in the morning, um, you basically, if you want to collect what you what you've passed, you can. Um, if you don't, don't worry about it. A lot of times they'll float, especially if the cholesterol stones. They'll, they'll float in the toilet. If they're not, if you do end up passing like an actual calcified stone, you know they will sink, of course. I've passed the least amount of those. Um, I've passed several thousand of the cholesterol stones. Um, but then you can, you, if you really want to keep them, you can save them, put them in a freezer, number them by baggies. That gets old after about your tenth flush, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would keep track of it though with some photos, some pictures, labeling, you know, kind of when you did it, how many stones you passed, things like that. Just be nice to look back. I'm currently on my 62nd flush today. 
Uh, I'm on day six, so I'll be drinking the oil tonight. And some of the things people are also concerned about is having a stuck stone. Like, hey, what if a stone gets stuck in my common bile duct or something like that? Um, I mean, the truth is they're already stuck. You know, they're already stuck in your liver, in your bile duct. That's where they, it's kind of like the front door of the liver and gallbladder. Um, and that's why I was saying some of the chunk of pH or the gold coin grass, even drinking some apple cider vinegar, some of that can help alleviate some of the distension in there and allow some of it, some of the bile to pass by and give you a little bit of relief. But you know you need another one when, when you're eating and you feel like, man, I'm not just not digesting things right again. Things are backing up into your chest. Gas is starting to produce more and more. You know, with every meal, it's like, hey, I eat this stuff all the time. It normally doesn't cause me a problem. Now, all of a sudden, everything I'm eating is causing me gas, pressure in my chest. That's probably a sign you need another flush. Typically, what will happen is, you know, picture this tree, basically of bile ducts, all the way back into your liver. And... You know, the liver goes up into the left area, up into the upper left area of the, uh, of the left side of your chest, across to the right, and then down the right side. So it's kind of like a triangular football, mainly on the right side, but it also, the tip of that football kind of comes over onto the left side that overlaps the stomach. And when, when things get backed up like that in those bile ducts, um, it causes so many symptoms in so many areas, especially you got trigger points and, and all these other things that happen. So depending on where these stones are stuck or causing problems, they could trigger issues in your knees and your feet and your legs, calves. They could trigger things in your shoulders because once that pressure starts building up in your chest, then you have pressure in your shoulders, elbows. You could just have so many different problems. And if you go to the doctor, you know, you're just focusing on that symptom, not knowing that if you did a flush, you might just see those symptoms fall away immediately. And I'm not saying they won't come back because when the next batch of stones rolls forward, that's what a lot of people fail to understand. They do a flush, they feel great. They're like, okay, I'm, I'm done, you know, I'm, I'm clear. They'll do a, like a second or third flush and uh, oh, no stones. Well, that's not the case 99% of the time. Because once you do one flush and you purge, say, two or 300 stones, or maybe it takes four or five flushes for you to purge any stones. That's happened with several people. Um, just don't give up. You know, don't think you don't have any. Trust me, you have hundreds, if not thousands. It's just a process of getting them to finally forcefully come out of that that dammed up area. So you do a couple of flushes. You may have one or two where you don't pass anything, but no real flush is ever really wasted if you get the oil down and hold it for at least, you know, 30 minutes or so. I've done it before where I've gotten sick, thrown up the oil, and said, no, I've prepped too long for this. And I would go and drink the, I'd go make me another batch of oil and drink it. Like, I'm not, I'm not wasting this time. Now, my wife, she's a little different. She throws up. She said, I'm out. I'm done. Nope. So, she's done probably about seven or eight. Maybe, maybe nine. Uh, she's due for another one. Once she started having kids, she's kind of stopped doing them as much. But now, she was just telling me this morning she feels the need to do another one. So, I hope she follows through with that soon. But when you have those flushes that don't produce much, it's still pulling those next batch of stones forward closer to the front of the liver. I call it the front door of the liver. So even though you don't feel like you've done anything and your symptoms may even get worse, it's basically taking that blockage and bringing it closer and closer to the front of the liver. The closer it gets, the worse the symptoms are going to be because the closer it gets, the more impacted it is at the exit of the liver. And you'll just have to keep pushing through. Some people do flush every two weeks. You know, I don't recommend that because it can really deplete you. Uh, but just you, you have to just follow your body. If you feel fine, you feel strong, and you know, maybe do another one. Um, I've had to do a couple within a week's period, you know, before the things were really, really bad at that time. Though, so you just have to gauge that for your own personal where you're at personally. But yeah, as you keep scooting these stones, you might get the next batch out and flush five through eight. You might feel amazing for you know a few months, a few weeks, whatnot, and then you might start slowly feeling symptoms come back and so it's a commitment once you start doing the flushes if you're really wanting to clear the liver and the gallbladder like it's a commitment most people that are really ill that have lived a very poor lifestyle have a lot of health problems like a lot of us do you know that's what led us to nutritional balancing for the most part but you know it's going to take a lot of flushes 60 to 80 minimum most people it takes over 100 flushes to finally clear it out to where you're no longer passing stones you're actually just passing like sludgy bile and things like that 
Now, if you've, if you've lived a pretty healthy lifestyle, maybe it's only 20 or 40. You know, Andreas Moritz used to recommend about 8 to 12. But this was, you know, a decade plus ago. Um, and we're just living in completely different times. You know, everybody's sick, everybody's toxic, everybody's taking some sort of drugs or something. So as you get up into your, like, 20 to 30 flesh range, you may notice that you go for two or three periods with no stones at all, and that's just because it takes more time for that next batch of stones to, to come forward, whether it's coming from the left lobe or it's coming from the right lobe. Like, you don't really ever know, and you'll have these same healing reactions that Dr. Wilson talks about with the nutritional balancing program. You'll start to see some healing reactions with the, with the liver flesh, like some old memories may come up, some old pains may come up, but then when you have that next flesh and those stones come out, those emotions and things that were tied to those stones is a very, very intricate process of how it all works. It's, it's crazy. But it makes me understand the, the truth of the healing reactions more and more. Uh, like, for example, when, when I started doing my flushes, I started passing several stones and my lower sacrum area started opening up um, over a course of several months and even a couple of years. The more flushes and the more stones that I would pass, I, my structure and my, my body started opening up a little bit more. I wasn't even on the full program in, at the time because I couldn't do most of the supplements and, and things like that, sauna and things like that. So I contribute a lot of it to the liver flush. So yeah, my spine would start opening up down near my sacrum. Um, my body would just readjust in different areas. I'd be able to eat more foods. Like now I can have onions, garlic. Like I used to not be able to eat any of that stuff. Um, still can't do really well with, with like rice, grains, things like that. I just typically stay away from the dairy. I still hadn't done too much of, you know, I do a little bit of the raw goat cheese and things like that, but I still sense there's some issues there. So being on Flesh 62, uh, I would say make sure you, you're committed. Like, cause if you start the process, you, you're going to start removing some of those stones. You're going to feel good. But it's only inevitable that the next batch of stones are going to move forward. You know, the biggest ones that I've seen that can be passed are about the size of a nickel. Some people have passed, you know, about a quarter size. But but that's that's quite unusual. That's why you need to dilate the ducts. That's why you need to take the malic acid properly and not just skip that side of it. But that's pretty much it. You know, if if you want to ask me any questions or anything like that, I'll try to help any way I can. But especially if you're troubleshooting something or having second guesses about doing the actual flush itself. I can say most of my symptoms tend to fall away after a flush. Um, and depending on how ill you've been, you know, that'll determine when you might need to do another flush when that next batch scoots forward. So hope this has been helpful. Y'all take care.